साई महाराज श्री गुरुदेव की जय निखिल विष्णु विष्णु पार अश्वत अश्वत अश्वर श्री भक्ति ग्रंथ बामन गोसाई महाराज की जय निखिल विष्णु विष्णु पार अश्वत अश्वत अश्वर श्री भक्ति भक्ति ग्रंथ साई महाराज श्री प्रभु पार की जय निखिल विष्णु विष्णु पार अश्वत अश्वत अश्वर श्री भक्ति प्रज्ञान केशव गोसाई महाराज की जय नितिल विष्णु विष्णु पार अश्वत अश्वत अश्वर जगर गुरु शिल भक्ति सिद्धांत सरस्वती गोसाई प्रभु पार की जाय तदीय शुभ थिर थी महामहोत्सव की जाय श्री तदीय परसाद वृंद की जाय नितिल विष्णु महाभागवत शिल गोक्षर स्वभा जी महाराज की जाय नितिल विष्णु शिल सच्चरंद भक्ति विनोद ठाकुर की जाय नितिल विष्णु वैष्णव सार्वभौम शिल जगन्नाथ दास बाबा जी महाराज की जाय श्री रूप नुगोरिय गुरु वर्ग की जाय श्री रूप सनातन भट्ट रघुनाथ श्री जीव गोपाल भट्ट दास रघुनाथ शार गोसाई प्रभु की जाय श्री स्वरूप दामदार राय रामानंद दारी श्री गौर प्रसाद वृंद की जाय नाम चय शिल हरिदास ठाकुर की जाय प्रेम से कहो श्री कृष्ण चैतन्यानंद श्री आद्वैत गदाधार श्रीवासरी गौर भक्त वृंद की जाय श्री क्षेत्र मंडल गौर मंडल व्रज मंडल मथुर वृंदावन धाम की जाय सर्व अविश्य प्रदात गिरिराज महाराज की जाय श्री राखुन श्याम खुन की जाय श्री मुन देवी गंग देवी की जाय श्री तुलसी महारानी वृंद देवी की जाय श्री भक्ति देवी की जाय श्री पूर्णमासी योग माया की जाय श्री गोपेश्वर महादेव की जाय श्री हरिनाम संकीर्तन की जाय अनंत कोटि वैष्णव वृंद की जाय समागत गौर भक्त वृंद की जाय ग्रंथराज श्रीमद भागवत की जाय श्रीनीता गौर प्रेमानंदे हरि हरि गो ओम ज्ञानतिरंद से ज्ञानंजनाशलाकया चक्षुरोन्मीता तस्म श्रीगुरव नम नमो विष्णुपदा राधिका प्रियात्मने श्री श्रीमाभक्ति वेदात नारायणतिनामने नमो विष्णुपदा कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले <coughs> श्रीमाते भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी ने नमस्ते सरस्वती देव गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पश्चातादेशिणे नम ओं विष्णुपदा आचार्य सिंह रूपिणे श्री श्रीमाभक्ति प्रज्ञान केशव इति नामने अतिमर्तचरित्रा स्वाश्रिता चलने <coughs> जीवदुखे सदर्ता श्रीनाम प्रेम दायने नम ओं विष्णुपदा कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमाते भक्ति सिद्धांत सारस्वती नामने श्री वर्ष भानवी देवी दायिताय कृपाधय कृष्ण संबंध विज्ञान दायने प्रभव नम मधोजल प्रेमाध्या श्री रूपनुग भक्ति श्री गौर करुण शक्ति विग्रहाय नमस्ते नमस्ते गौरवाणी श्री मूर्ताय दीन तारिणे रूपानुग विरुदाप सिद्धांत दिणे नमो गौरकिशोराय साक्षर वैराग्यमूर्ताय विप्रलंबर संबोधे पदंबुजाय नम नमो भक्ति विनोदाय सचिरानंदनाम ने गौरशक्तिस्वूपा रूपनुगावराय ते 
पंचकल्पतरुभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम नमो महाबदन्याय कृष्ण प्रेम प्रदाय कृष्णा कृष्ण चैतन्य नाने गौरथिषे नम गुरवे गौरचंद्रा राधिकाय तदालाय कृष्णा कृष्ण भक्ताय तरभक्ताय नमो नम यां प्रव्रजतमुपेतमेतृत द्वैपायनो विरह का तर आजुहाव पुत्रे तन्मयतया तर गोविनेदस्त सार्वभूत हृदय मुनिमान नारायण नमस्कृत नारा चरोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तत् जयाम उदीरए श्रीनवत स्वकता कृष्ण पुण्य श्रवण कीर्तन हृदयतस्तोयद्राणी विधुनोती सुरसत नष्ट प्रयेश बबदेशु नि भागवत सेवाया भागवतुतम श्लोक भक्तिर्भवती नैष्टी तवास्मी तवास्मी न जीवामी तया विना विज्ञाधे नयम चरनिक भक्त विहीना अपराध लक्षा क्षिप्ताष्ट कामतरंग मध्ये कृपा मयि तम शरण प्रपन्न वृंदे नमस्ते चरणारविंद भजश्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नितानंद श्री आदैत गदाधार शिवासरी गौर्भक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे One second. Huh. It's so odd. I just open this. Oh. Anyhow. Um, okay, so now we are continuing on just the last few verses of Srimad Bhagavatam. Sorry guys. <laughs> Yesterday we read Okay. So we read about Brahma's further creation after he did, um after he first he created the prajapatis, you know, who the progenitors of mankind and they started making you know many different living entities and now um now he manifests the four vedas that's this is what we read yesterday he manifested the four vedas the rigveda yajurveda samaveda atharaveda then the upavedas the ayurveda medical science dhanurveda military arts gandharva veda musical art and stapatya uh, veda architectural science and then the puranas and itihasas and um all the different sacrifices these all did, came out of different parts of his body you see here in the list you know from his eastern mouth southern mouth western mouth you know all these different things from oh from his different mouths um okay dang it oh okay so next page And then the four legs of Dharma, um, Vidya, sorry, knowledge, charity, austerity, truth, and then the four ashrams, Brahmacharya, Grihastha, Vanaprastha, Sanyas, and the four types of Brahmacharya, Savitra, Prajapatya, Brahmana, 
Brihat, the four occupations of Grihastas, Varta, um, occupations not forbidden, like agricultural and performing sacrifices, taking alms without begging, taking the fallen grains in the fields, and then the four types of Vanaprastas, those who lived on wild grains, those who give up accum uh, accumulated grains on gaining new grains, those who live uh, off of what he acquires by walking in the direction he sees on getting up in the morning, and who lives off grains or fruit that naturally have fallen on the ground. And then the four types of sannyas, um, who focuses on karma and his own hermitage, who rejects action and focuses on gyan, who is fixed in knowledge and who has attained realization, nishkriya. <clears throat> and then the arts, <clears throat> God, sorry, something's stuck in my throat, can't get it out. Then he manifested the arts, sciences, and celebrated hymns, like logic, Vedic goals, law and order, and moral codes. Um, then Bhu, Bhuva, Swa, and their combination. Those are the, uh, and then the Pranav Omkar, that manifested from his heart, the Om. <laughs> and now we're up to, um, Now we're up to, um, this is what we read yesterday, the Vedic meters and verse writing. So there's Ushnik, Gayatri, Trishtup, Anushtup, Jagati, Pankti, Brihati. These are all different um, like meters. And they came from his bodily hairs, the skin, flesh, muscle, veins, bones, bone marrow, and pran. Just really interesting. You know, the all the verses that we're saying, it, most of the verses are like are in Anushtup, 32 syllables. So uh, also like the Mangla Charan, um, Namo Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prashtaya, Bhutale, Srimante, that's also Anushtup. And so now we are, oh, and we also read this, all the audible sounds, the different um, five consonants with their nasals, um, the swara, the the vowels, and all the consonants, the musical notes, and now we are reading from verse eighty forty eight, the last couple verses. Shabda Brahmat Manastasya Vyakta Vyakta Manapara. Brahma Vabhati Vitata Nana Shakti Upabrimhita. Brahma is the personal representation of the Supreme Personality of Godhead as the source of transcendental sound and is therefore above the conception of manifested and unmanifested. Brahma is the complete form of the Absolute Truth and is invested with multifarious energies. <clears throat> Third point. The post of Brahma is the highest responsible post within the universe, and it is offered to the most perfect personality of the universe. Sometimes the Supreme Personality of Godhead is, has to become Brahma when there is no suitable living being to occupy the post. In the material world, Brahma is the complete representation of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and transcendental sound, prana, comes from him. He is therefore invested with multifarious energies from which all the demigods like Indra, Chandra, and Varuna are manifested. His transcendental value is not to be minimized, even though he exhibited a tendency to enjoy his own daughter. There is a purpose for the exhibition of such a tendency by Brahma, and he is not to be condemned like an ordinary living entity. Tato param upadaya sasargaya manodate. Thereafter, Brahma accepted another body in which sex life was not forbidden, and thus he engaged himself in the matter of further creation. Purport. In his former body, which was transcendental, affection for sex life was forbidden, and Brahma therefore had to accept another body to allow himself to be connected with sex. He thus engaged himself in the matter of creation. His former body transformed into fog, as previously described. <laughs> so neat, huh? 
ऋषीना भूरीवीर्यानाम विस्तृत ज्ञात हृदय भूयाश्चिंता आशा कौरव O son of the Kurus, when Brahma saw that in spite of the presence of the of sages and great potency, there was no sufficient increase in population, he seriously began to consider how the population could be increased. Okay, I found this on the web for he seriously began to consider how the population could be increased. <laughs> Check it out. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know why um, Siri heard this. Okay. Okay. <laughs> अहो अद्भुत ब्रह्म अलास इट इज वंडरफुल दट इन स्पाइ ऑफ माई बींग स्कैरड ऑल ओवर देर इज स्टिल इन सफिशियंट पॉपुलेशन थ्रू आउट द यूनिवर्स देर इज नो अदर कॉज फॉर दिस मिस फॉर्चून बट डेस्टनी While he was thus absorbed in contemplation and was observing the supernatural power, two other forms were generated from his body. They are still celebrated as the body of Brahma. Purport: Two bodies came out of the body of Brahma. One had a mustache. and the other had swollen breasts no one can explain the source of their manifestation and therefore until today they are known as the kayam or body of or the body of brahma with no indication of their relationship as his son or daughter tabhyam rupa vibhag kabhyam mithunam samapadyata The two newly separated bodies united together in a sexual relationship. Yastu tatra puman so bhun mano swayam swayam bhuva swarat striya sichchata rupa pakya mahishyasya mahatmana. Out of out of them the one who had the male form became known as the manu named swayam bhuva. and the and the woman became known as shatarupa the queen of the great soul manu oh yeah the swayam bhuva means self born right self manifested tada mituna dharme na praja hetam babhu vire thereafter by sex indulgence they gradually increased the generations of population one after another sachapi shatarupayam panchapatyanna chijanat priyavrato tappa na priyavrato tana pado tisra kanyascha bhrata tisra kanyascha bhrata bharata sai O son of Bharata, in due course of time, he, Manu, begot in Shatarupa five children, two sons, Priyavrata and Uthanapada, and three daughters, Akuti, Devahuti, and Prasuti. अकुतेम रुचाये प्राधात कार्दमाया तुमध्यमाम दक्षाया धात प्रसूतिंचा यता ओ आपुरितम जगत। The father Manu handed over his first daughter Akuti to the sage Ruchi, the middle daughter Devahuti to the sage Kardama, and the youngest Prasuti to Daksha. From them. all the world filled with population purport the history of the creation of the population of the universe is given here with brahma is the original living creature in the universe from whom were generated the manu swayambhuva and his wife shatarupa from manu two sons and three daughters were born 
and from them all the population in different planets has sprung up until now. Therefore, Brahma is known as the grandfather of everyone, and the personality, uh, and the personality of Godhead, being the father of Brahma, is known as the great-grandfather of all living beings. This is confirmed in Bhagavad Gita 11.39 as follows. Vayuryamognir varuna shashanka prajapatistvam prapita mahascha namo namaste stu sahasrakritva punascha bhuyo pinam namo namaste You are the beloved, sorry, what are, why did I say you are the Lord of Air, the Supreme Justice Yama, the Fire, and the Lord of Rains. You are the Moon, and you are the Great Grandfather. Therefore, I offer my respectful obeisances to you, unto you again and again. Thus ends the Bhakti Vedanta purports of the 3rd Canto, 12th chapter of the Srimad Bhagavatam, entitled Creation of the Kumaras and Others. And tomorrow we will begin Chapter 13, The Appearance of Lord Varaha. All right, so today is a very, very special day, the Divine Disappearance Day of Jagad Guru Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Goswami Prabhupada. And so we are going to read a class given by my Gurudev um, in this book, Sri Prabhupada. What page is it? I think it's 31. And then afterwards, what time is it now? It's 7.25. So if there's a little bit of time left over, then we can read something more. Oops, I went way past. And this class was given in the early 90s. I don't know exactly what year, but maybe like 90, 92, 93. Jagad Guru Shila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada Ki Jai. Today is the anniversary of the day of separation from Nitya Lila Pravishta, Om Vishnupada Ashtotara Shatashi, Srimad Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami Prabhupada. It is the day of Panchami, and he also appeared on Panchami. He took birth in the home of Bhakti Vinod Thakur, who is an eternal associate of both Sri Krishna and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Just as the sage Bhagirata brought the Ganga to, the world, to this world, Bhakti Vinod Thakur was the great personality who brought the current of Bhakti to this world in the modern era. When the so-called Goswamis were making a business out of Bhakti while engaging in varieties of worldly enjoyment, when in the name of Mahaprabhu, so many kinds of bogus philosophies were prevalent, such as Saki Beki, Smarta Jati, uh, sahajya, etc. At that time, Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur came. After that, Prabhupada appeared in the form of his son, Bimal Prasad, Bimala Prasad. If these two great personalities had not appeared, then Srila Bhakti would not exist in the, in the world today. And from the, uh, And from the time that they disappeared, society began reverting back to its previous condition. At first, there were 13 known Sahajya cults. Then our Guru Maharaj, Srila Bhakti Pagyan Keshav Goswami Maharaj, counted 39. And how many there are now, no one knows. I'm also seeing how things are gradually changing. We saw how renounced the devotees were before. For instance, we never used to see socks on the feet of any Vaishnav. And we never saw devotees wearing such sweaters and chadars as we, as we do now. They only wore the bare necessities of clothing and a cheap blanket, even as they attended Mangalarti in the morning cold. It is only after the disappearance of Prabhupada that devotees can be seen to wear these other things. They would live with such simplicity, eating only shak, rice, and a thin dal. But in comparison to them, just look at the way we are living. And I speak for myself also. Their knowledge, their renunciation, and their spiritual conception were of such a high standard that in comparison to them, we are so inferior. The period between Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur and Bhakti Vinod Thakur 
It was an age of darkness for Gaudiya Vaishnavism. Living at that time were some real Vaishnavs who performed real bhajan, but mostly, just as we still see sometimes today, the so-called Vaishnavs only performed rituals for wages. When someone would die, people would call the Gaudiya Vaishnav Babaji's who would come and chant some ceremonial kirtan and rituals for wages. And there was so much misconduct in their behavior. Seeing this, Bhaktivinoda Thakur thought, these people are Vaishnavs? The conception of Mahaprabhu has completely vanished. What can be done? He was very worried. Bhaktivinoda Bhakti Thakur endeavored to his utmost, but changes did not come about in his lifetime to the degree that he would have liked. One second, there's somebody at my door. I'll be one second. Okay. Uh, he went from town to town and village to village, inaugurating the Nam Hatta. In each village, he would assemble four or five of the religious men, form a committee, and hold programs for Harinam Kirtan on Sundays. Gradually, it spread from one village to the next, for overall, his preaching was limited to Navadip, Kolkata, and the rest of Bengal. He published the magazine Sajan Toshani, and through its medium, he gradually published Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita and other books and installments. He made a circle of devotees and also revealed Navadvip Tam through his writings, although the scholars of society and the Sahajas didn't accept his ideology. Then Prabhupada appeared in Puri. Because Bhaktivinoda Thakur was a district magistrate, he would be transferred here and there but he would always keep Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu and Chaitanya Charitamrita with him and explain them to his son. Prabhupada received so much instruction from him, but we should, but we should understand that Prabhupada is an eternally liberated soul. There is no one in the world like him. Without being educated in school or college, he learned all subjects very quickly and became a great scholar in Sanskrit. His English was so high that even professors of English could not understand it. I have been told by some learned Western devotees that when reading his Brahma Samhita, they must repeatedly consult the dictionary. And his Bengali was also of such a high standard that even eminent scholars found it difficult to follow. He said that spiritual language should be like that. It shouldn't be so simple to understand. As one progresses spiritually by remaining in the company of Vaishnavs, he will be able to understand spiritual vernacular. At the age of seven or eight, Prabhupada began worshipping a deity of Kumade, and Bhaktivinoda Thakur gave him the Maha Mantra and other mantras for his puja. At the age of 18, all of the scholars of astronomy in Bengal gave him the title Saraswati. After that, he attended college, but quarreled with the professors, saying, Will I learn from you or teach you? <laughs> when he abandoned his studies, Bhaktivinoda Thakur and other family members became concerned. So they took him to Puri, where he began studying at Satasan Ashram, which is where Sarup Damodar and Raghunath Das Goswami had lived. Vaishnavs used to regularly meet there, and now Srila Siddhanti Maharaj has a mat at that very place. Then, Prabhupada began giving readings from Chaitanya Charitamrita. Present there were some Babaji's who considered themselves a Sikh, and when they heard Prabhupada's explanations, they became inimical to him. Seeing this, Bhaktivinoda Thakur took him away from there and had him begin teaching the son of the king of Tripura. Prabhupada had a great library of Vaishnav literature, and having read through it thoroughly, he began teaching the son of the king in such a way that the boy accepted a chanting mala and began wearing tilak. He became detached from the world and gradually hearing Harikata became his sole interest. Seeing this, the queen became very annoyed and said to the king, This boy will become useless. Then after your demise, what will happen? Who will make offerings to our departed souls? 
he will become a renunciate and everything will be ruined. Quickly, get rid of this teacher. Give him 400 rupees to go. We don't need money. We need a son. <laughs> that was approximately 100 years ago. So you can imagine how much 400 rupees was worth then. The queen put so much pressure on her husband that in the end he approached Prabhupada and very humbly said, It is a matter of great unhappiness that our family members are not in favor of you. They are afraid that the boy will take up bhakti and become a renunciate. I consider it that he has been. Uh, I consider it that it has been our great fortune to have met a person like you, and had our son educated by you. But the others don't understand. The king approached Bhaktivinoda Thakur and offered the money to him, but without accepting it, they left there. Then Bhaktivinoda Thakur started a homeopathic shop. When the shop was unsuccessful, he thought. I was not made to run a shop anyway. And he went and purchased some land in Mayapur. After locating the birthplace of Mahaprabhu, he installed deities there of Gaur, Vishnupriya, and Lakshmipriya, as well as small Radhakrishna murtis. After Bhaktivinoda Thakur's disappearance, Prabhupada was determined to follow the Nabadip Tham Parikrama that his, father, that his father had written. And to attract people, he invited great kirtan performers to attend. He set up a large tent. Uh, he set up a large tent. Thousands of people came for the Purukama, and there the Kata of Shuddha Bhagavad Bhakti commenced. Gradually, qualified youths of only 16, 17, and 18 years, whose hearts were soft and pure, came forward, and Prabhupada made them into brahmacharis and sannyasis. With great ease, he was able to train them. Uh, with great ease, he was able to train them. But those who were, fi who were over 50 years old, like parrots, could not be taught anything new. Then devotees like our Guru Maharaj, Bon Maharaj, Bhakti Pradeep Tirtha Maharaj, Bhakti Vilas Tirtha Maharaj, Aranya Maharaj, and Narahari Prabhu came. In the beginning, there in Mayapur, Narahari Prabhu would offer arti while Prabhupada played the handheld gong, and gradually the preaching started. The convention of Chidandi Sanyas was established, and the result is that today the name and conception of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu are being vigorously preached. Within 11 years, from 1926 to 1937, preaching was spread everywhere. But before that, so much time was spent in merely settling the foundation. Sorry, in setting the foundation. Prabhupada published many magazines, daily, weekly, and monthly in Sanskrit, Bengali, Hindi, Oriya, English, and Assamese languages. And very easily, we have all inherited the fruits of his endeavor. Of his endeavor. He established the Gaudiya line very strictly with great endeavor, and there are so many difficulties in his preaching campaign that we cannot even imagine them. There was so much opposition to Prabhupada's preaching at that time that his disciples were not even allowed to enter the mandirs in Vrindavan or Navadip. Wow. Could you imagine that, not being allowed inside any of the temples in Vrindavan or Navadip? Prabhupada began culturing the creeper of devotion by cutting off all of, those ne all of the unnecessary branches and sub-branches. How? First of all, he revised the Guru Parampara. He said that we are all of Mahaprabhu's line, and he removed the names of those who were not fully perfected. After establishing the names of Brahma, Narad, and Vyas, he went straight to Madhva. Prabhupada accepted the names of, of those from whom the people of this world would get the most benefit, and mostly they were Brahmacharis. For the most part, he didn't accept the names of those who had been Grihastas for a long time. After Madhva, he recognized some special personalities and then he went to the name of Madhavendra Puri. Everyone accepts him, and then from him, there's Ishwara Puri, Sarup Damadar, the six Goswamis, and then Krishna Das Kabiraj Goswami. At this point, some had divided into the lines of Nityananda Prabhu, Advaita Acharya, Gadadar Pandit, Rakeshwar Pandit, Lokanath Goswami, and others. But Prabhupada said, we accept in our line those who are fully perfected souls, who know the correct Siddhanta, and who are Rasi wherever they are. In this way, all of the various lines were represented in our parampara in one place or another. 
There are so many lines of disciplic succession, but Prabhupada said that we will recognize the Guru Parampara, not the disciplic succession. The Guru Parampara is composed solely, uh, is composed solely of those who are Bhagavat Gurus, even if they made no disciples and there is therefore no direct disciplic line coming from them. Some of them may have not been initi- uh, some of them may not have initiated any disciples at all, but still they are Jagad Gurus. In this way, with all pervading vision, he collected all the Mahajans and made what is known as the Bhagavat Parampara or Guru Parampara. After the departure of Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, so many familial disciplical lines arose. But Prabhupada ignored them and gave recognition to Baladev Vijabusha and then Jagannath Das Babaji. <clears throat> he accepted only those in whom he detected the real spiritual Siddhanta. Simply receiving the mantra in one's ear and wearing a dhoti or other cloth given by the Guru does not qualify one as the Guru's successor. Bhaktivinoda Thakur did not receive any mantra from Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj. So how was he his disciple? He was a disciple of a, uh, he was a disciple of his conception, his feelings towards Krishna, his conception of Ras, and his conception of Tattva. This is a disciple. Most people can't understand this, but being able to see with such insight, Prabhupada declared this to be our line. Gorkishore Das Babaji Maharaj was also not an interested sorry, was not an initiated disciple of Bhaktivinoda Thakur. But he embraced all of Bhaktivinoda Thakur's sentiments and conceptions, and due to this, his name appears next, next in, in the succession. <clears throat> At this point, all of the Babaji said, Whose disciple is Bhakti, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati? Who gave him sannyas? Why doesn't he wear the same cloth as Sanatana Goswami did? In our Sampradaya, after Nityananda Prabhu and Sarup Damodar, everyone wore white cloth. But we see that he wears saffron cloth and he has accepted a danda. How can he do this? But what relation does wearing but what relation does wearing either orange or white cloth have with bhakti? Is there any relation? Kiva Vipra Kiva Nasi Shudra Kene Noi J Krishna Tatva Veta She Guru Hoy. Shri Chaitanya Chaitamita Madhi Lila 8128. Whether one is a Brahman, a sannyasi, or a sudra. If he knows Krishna Tattva, then he is, he is a guru. So what to speak of being a Vaishnava? Prabhupada was thinking, we are not qualified to accept the dress that was worn by such great personalities as Rupa, Sanatan, Jiva, and Krishnadas Kaviraj. We will remain in the ordinary dress of sannyasis and will not accept the dress of Paramahamsa Babaji's. Remaining within the Varanashram Sista, Sorry, remaining within the Varanashram system as brahmacharis and sannyasis, we will keep the ideal of that Paramahamsa dress above our heads. Otherwise, if we accept that dress and commit sinful activities, it will be aparad at the lotus feet, sorry, at the feet of Rupa and Sanatan. Some Babaji's criticize him for training brahmacharis and then giving him the sacred thread. But our Guru Maharaj said that those, Babaji, that those Babaji's were all fools, like animals. They wore Paramahamsa dress and gave the elevated Gopi mantra to anyone and everyone who came. Yet Prabhupada was only training the brahmacharis and giving them instructions on how to control the senses. So which is correct? First, Prabhupada wanted us to understand what is Siddhanta, i.e. Jiva Tattva, Maya Tattva, and Bhagavad Tattva, and how to avoid Maya in the forms of Kanak, wealth, Kamini, women, and Pratishta, prestige. These all are the beginning instructions. Gopi Bhav is very elevated. First, we must understand that I am Krishna Das and begin taking Harinam, chanting Harinam. But these Babaji's immediately gave their conception of Gopi Bhav to whoever approaches them. Then they all chant, I am Gopi, I am a Gopi. And in this way, they create a disturbance in society. Every morning in our mat, we sing the song in which Prabhupada established the Bhagavat Parampara. Krishna hoite chatur muka. In his composing of this song, he accepted all of the great perfected personalities from different lines and declared, This is the line of Gora. If Prabhupada had not come, then today would be, uh, then today would the name of Mahaprabhu and talks from Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam be found anywhere? 
Here in Mathura, in Vraj, and everywhere else, Guru Kirtan and Harikatha are still going on and have not vanished. Therefore, the world will, will remain forever. Sorry, the world will forever remain indebted to Prabhupada for his preaching. He never approached wealthy people, but he would take one paisa from each person he met. And our Guru Maharaj did the same. Although he was from a from a wealthy family, he would take a wooden box with a slot in it into the market, and also onto the trains, trams, and buses. He would speak with people from all classes, and in this way the preaching spread in all directions. We should also engage in such a pure form of preaching, and not just remain idle after hearing this. As if giving an injection, you should all encourage others to start taking Harinam and hearing this conception, whether you are a man or a lady, married or unmarried. And don't... Okay, I found this on the web. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and don't think that because one is not educated, he cannot do it. Did Haridas Thakur have any college degree? Did Raghunath Das Goswami and others? But their activities were first class, and their conceptions were extremely high. We are regularly hearing tattva from scriptures such as Srimad Bhagavatam and Brihad Bhagavatam Rita. But how will others also get the opportunity to hear it? After hearing it, we should take it to many other people. And this is the duty of each and every one of us. With great love, we should take Harinam and encourage others to chant it. We should hear Siddhanta ourselves and then help others to understand it. This will give Prabhupada great pleasure. To the very end of his life, Prabhupada said, <clears throat> we, are, we are mere laborers. We are the peons of Bhagavat Kata. He never made himself a permanent living situation in an opulent temple, but he always kept moving. These days we do things a little differently, but we should always try to follow not only Prabhupada's philosophical conception, but the ideal he showed through his own behavior as well. These ideas serve as the very foundation of bhakti, and if this foundation is not established, then we will fall from here. Then we will fall from hearing the higher levels of kata. For instance, Bhakti Vinod Thakur has written a song entitled Vibhavari Shesha, in which concludes lines such as Yamuna Jivana Ke Liparayana Manasa Chandra Chakora Nama Sudhara Sagao Krishna Yasha Shri Krishna is the life of the Yamuna. He, uh, he is always engaged in amorous pastimes, and he is the moon of the gopis' hearts. Sing the glories of he whose name is pure Ras. O oh mind, always remember these words. In our mat, we sing this every day, and there is certainly some benefit in it. But do we understand the complete bhav contained within it? Nothing remains outside these lines, not the Ras Lila, not the Brahmargit, not the Venugit, nothing. Everything is there, and all of the previous lines of the song are similarly saturated with both Ras and Tattva. Pula Shara Jo Jakakama, uh, Pula Shara Yo Jakakama. What is the meaning? The complete calm Gayatri has come here. Shara means an arrow, and an arrow of calm, desire, which Krishna places on his bow. How many of these arrows does Krishna have? Five. His sidelong glances, his eyebrows, cheeks, nose, and smile. So tell me, is there anything remaining outside these lines? Helping the people of the world to understand these topics is the real task of the Guru Parampara. Those who are conversant with Ras, the Diksha and Shiksha Guru, uh, those who are conversant with Ras, the, shik the Diksha and Shiksha Gurus. If we examine one line of this song after another, then for so many days, so many lectures could be given, and our hearts would become full of ras and divine bliss upon hearing their full meaning. So much bhav has been put into each word by Bhaktivinoda Thakur, and it is the very same with the compositions of Nartam Das Thakur and Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur. To understand what our acharyas have given, great intelligence and bhav are required. And if we have such a bhav in our hearts by which we can understand the poetry and the special characteristics of acharyas like Prabhupada, then wherever we may go, it will always remain with us. 
and explaining the line Param Vijayate Shri Krishna Sankirtanam from the first verse of Mahaprabhu's Shikshashtak, Prabhupada wrote that this is the Gaudiya Mat's mode of worship. There are three stages, the beginning stage of sadhana, the intermediate stage of bhav, and the final attainment produced by that bhav, which is called prem. Sadhana is the practice by which Shuddha Sattva bhav arises. And if it does not arise, what, what one is practicing cannot be called sadhana. We can all examine ourselves and see if we're practicing the sadhana that makes bhav arise or not. Are the symptoms there or not? We may not even have the proper aim in, in our sadhana. If someone is striking a match, what is his aim? To obtain a flame, uh, to obtain a flame. And if after striking one match, a flame is not obtained, then he will take another match and try again. Our endeavor to reach the sadhya, the final attainment, through the practice of sadhan is like that. Kshud anuvritti, spiritual hunger. Tushti, satisfaction. Pushti, and strength. These three things should appear, and if they don't, then we are not really practicing sadhana and cannot, uh, and cannot be called real sadhaks. Whatever we do should be done with this vision. By performing this activity, bhava for Krishna will arise. Is the, ma uh, is the match producing a flame or not? If we see that our sadhana is producing attachment for material results such as patishta, then we are moving in the wrong direction. Therefore, we should understand this point well. The sole aim of kirtan is to make bhav arise. Cheto darpana marjanam. In our practice of nam sankirtan, have our minds become purified or not? Are our minds going towards wealth, material enjoyment, and prestige? Do we consider material enjoyment to be poisonous or favorable to us? Material enjoyment is poison. Haridas Thakur was taking Harinam in a solitary place when a very beautiful woman approached him and said, Prabhu, you will no longer have to cook for yourself. You won't have to fetch water, and I will also serve your Tulsi plant. You can just chant Harinam all day, and I will perform all of your tasks. And if you become fatigued, I will, I will massage your feet. But did Haridas Thakur accept her? All types of material enjoyment should be understood to be poison, whether one is a man or a woman. If we consider things like luxurious food and accommodation to be favorable to us, then the mirror of the mind will not be cleansed, and the reflection of one's own spiritual form will not be visible. The mirror should be made pure. There should be no dust or anything on it. We should be able to see what is our, illusor uh, our illusory body, what is our spiritual body, and what all of our faults are. But it, is our, but it is our great misfortune that instead we only see others' faults. The first type of contamination affecting our minds is thinking that we are the material body. We are eternal servants of Krishna, but the most prevalent dust of, on the mirror of the mind is thinking that we are the material body. Endeavoring for the happiness of the body is the dust on the mirror, or contamination of our minds, on our minds. There are so many arnatas, sarup prama, bewilderment concerning one's actual form and nature, asat trishna, desire for temporary things, hridai dorbalya, weakness of heart, and aparad, offenses. Besides these, described in uh, besides these, described in Chakravarti Thakur's Madhurya Kadambini are utsaha mai, false confidence, ganatarala, sporadic endeavor, yudha vikalpa, indecision, vishaya sangara, combat with the senses, niya makshama, inability to uphold vows, and taranga rangini, delighting in the material facilities produced by devotion. Then there are four types of aparad, dushkritota, arising from previous sins, sukritota, arising from previous piety, aparadota, arising from offenses and chanting, and bhaktuta, arising from imperfect service. When all of these are eradicated, then our real selves, the atma, will reflect in the mirror of the mind. But for now, our vision is distorted. We consider the pain and happiness of the material body to be our own, and our worldly relations and worldly loss and gain to be related to our very selves. 
Bhava Maha Devagni Nirvahana. This is the forest fire of material existence in which we are time and again taking birth. When the mirror of the mind is purified, then this great fire will, will be extinguished and we will progress along the path of sadhan for uttama bhakti, that devotion which is free from any tendencies towards karma or gyan. That devotion will be kleshagni, that which burns away so many types of difficulties. It will not happen all at once, but gradually. First there is shraddha, then nishta, and then we will move towards ruchi and asakti, when our anartas will have been mostly eradicated. Will have been mostly eradicated. However, those anartas may still exist in root form. One may shave his head, but has even one hair but has even one hair completely disappeared? Its roots are still there, and the hair will again will again appear after a couple of days. In the same way, when we have reached the stage of asakti, only the roots of anartas will remain. Externally, they will not be visible. If a favorable environment is given to them, that is, if we keep bad company or offend a Vaishnava, then they will reappear. But upon reaching the stage of Bhav, they will be finished forever. Then there is Shubhada, which is of many varieties. In the worldly sense, Shubha means having wealth, good progeny, position, fame and knowledge, and keeping the body healthy so that the effects of old age will not become permanent, prematurely. But what is real Shubha? Having Ruchi for the name and Lila Kata of Bhagavan and for the limbs of Bhagavad Bhajan Sadhan. Having eagerness for these things is Shuba, and that Shuba is the lotus flower described by the words Shreya Kairava Chandrika Vitarana. If the rays of the moon fall upon it, it will bloom purely without and without blemishes. How will such pure bhakti arise in the heart? The Shakti of Harinam is like the rays of the moon which make the lotus of the heart gradually bloom, taking it through the stages of nishta, ruchi, asakti, and pav. When it fully blossoms, that is a stage of prem. But for the shakti of harinam, no, but for the shakti of harinam to act in this way, our interests may be drawn away from material life. In the same way as two swords will not remain together in one scabbard, Maya and Bhakti cannot, will not remain together in one's heart. Vidya Vadu Jivanam Nam Sankirtan is the very life of Vidya Vadu. Vidya is that by which we can know Jiva Tattva, Maya Tattva, and ultimately Krishna. It does not mean knowledge of mundane science or how, how to make money. Real Vidya is Bhakti and ultimately assumes the form of Vadu or consort of Krishna. First there is Saran Bhakti then Bhav Bhakti, and finally Prema Bhakti. After entering Prema Bhakti, one's devotion develops through the stages of Sneha, Man, Pranaya, Rag, Anurag, Bhav, and finally Mahabhav. The embodiment of Mahabhav is Shrimati Radhika, who is the Vadu, or consort of Krishna. Over and above the Santini Shakti, the Samvit and Pladini Shaktis fully manifest as Radha Bhav. This is Vidya Vadu. And even if one ray of this transcendental potency enters into our hearts, it is called Bhav. Anantam Bhudivardhanam Patipadam. If we are chanting Harinam with this Bhav, then with every step we will experience it, increasing Ananda, divine joy. In the Maha Mantra, there is Krishna Nam and also Hare, which means she who attracts Krishna away to the Kunja, Srimati Radhika. This bhav is so deep that it has no end, and this is and this is the nam so saturated with ras that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu brought to this world. When we chant the Maha Mantra with this bhav, then every step will submerge us deeper into the ocean of divine bliss. Purnamrita aswadanam. What is the purnamrita, the complete nectar? Prem, uh, prem, and one will perpetually relish it. Absorbed in chanting the name in this way, our acharyas such as Jayadev Goswami, Sanatan Goswami, and Bhaktivinoda Thakur could envision divine pastimes and compose such nectarian literatures. And Sarvatma Snapanam, one will never desire to resurface from that ocean of nectar where there is not even a trace of Maya, meaning that they have entered into Sarup City. 
This is the explanation of the first verse of Mahaprabhu's Shikshashtak, given by Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Prabhupada, whose return to Shishi Radha Krishna's eternal pastimes we are now commemorating on this day. All right, so since it's almost eight o'clock and I know some of you have to go, um, I am just going to end now and maybe I'll start another video. Let's see. And I will read Srila Bharati Maharaj's class. I have to think about it. So I opened up this class to the bottom, but it is kind of long. Anyway, okay. Ah, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Ah, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, Jaya Prabhupada, Jaya Prabhupada, Prabhupada, Jaya Prabhupada, Jaya Prabhupada, Jaya Jagar Guru Shila, Prabhupada, Jagar Guru Shila, Prabhupada, Jai Guru Deva, Guru Deva, Guru Deva, Jai Guru Deva, Hari Bol, Hari Bol, Hari Bol, Nitai Bol, Hari Bol, Nitai Bol, Hari Bol, Hari Bol, Hari Bol, Nitai Bol, Hari Bol. Jai Shishi Guru Gurangam Darvika Gidhari Shishi Radha Vinod Bihari Juki Jai Shi Govinda Gopinath Maran Mohan Juki Jai Nitul Pavisham Vishnupar Ashatara Shatashma Chila Bhakti Viranta Narayan Gosami Maharaj Shri Guru Dev Ki Jai Nitul Pavisham Vishnupar Ashatara Shatashma Chila Bhakti Viranta Vaman Gosami Maharaj Ki Jai Nitul Pavisham Vishnupar Ashatara Shatashma Chila Bhakti Vedanta Swami Maharaj Shri Prabhupar Ki Jai Nitil Pavisham Vishnupar Ashatara Shatashma Chila Bhakti Vrgyan Keshav Gosai Maharaj Ki Jai Nitil Pavisham Vishnupar Ashatara Shatashma Jagar Guru Shila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Gosai Prabhupar Ki Jai Tadiya Shriva Thirubha Thiti Maha Mahotsa Ki Jai Nitil Pavisham Maha Tvadiya Parashat Vrinda Ki Jai Nitil Pavisham Maha Bhagavad Shila Bhakshadas Babaji Maharaj Ki Jai Nitil Pavisham Shila Satcharanda Bhakti Vinod Thakur Ki Jai Nitil Pavishta Vaishnav Sarva Bhoma Shada Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj Ki Jai Shri Rupa Nuga Gauriya Guru Varga Ki Jai Shri Rupa Sanatan Bhattaragunath Shri Jeeva Gopal Bhattadashagunath Shara Gosai Prabhu Ki Jai Shri Sarup Damadar Rai Ramanandari Shri Gaur Parshad Vrinda Ki Jai Nama Chaya Shla Hairas Thakur Ki Jai Prem Se Kaho Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadar Shivasari Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai Shri Kshetta Mandal, Gaura Mandal, Raja Mandal, Mathura Vrindavan Dham Ki Jai Sarva Abhishta Bharata Giriraj Maharaj Ki Jai Shri Radha Kunda Shama Kun Ki Jai Shri Amuna Devi Ganga Devi Ki Jai Shri Tulsi Maharani Vrindu Devi Ki Jai Shri Bhakti Devi Ki Jai Shri Purnamasa Yoga Maya Ki Jai Shri Gopeshwar Mahadev Ki Jai Shri Harinam Sankirtan Ki Jai Ananta Koti Vaishna Vrinda Ki Jai Samagata Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai Shri Nitai Gaur Premanande Hari Hari Gaur Vrindai Tulsi Devai Priyai Keshava Shacha Krishna Bhakti Paridevi Satya Vataya Namo Namaha Pancha Kalpa Taru Pyashta Dripa Sindhu Pyaya Vacha Patita Nam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namo Namaha Dandavat Pranams so I will stop this video and start a new video in just a couple minutes. Yes. <laughs> All right, Haribo. I've done the pronouncing Dina Mataji.